It is early in the morning on the banks of the Mbam River in the Mbam and Inugu division of Cameroon Center region. Richard is busy as usual, working to extract sand with Jean, his lifelong friend. Despite their disabilities and their sufferings they endure every day, this work remains their only motivation for living. The victims of blindness like Richard and Jean are still numerous in Cameroon in some localities across rivers and fast-flowing waters. Along these rivers, onconsokaisis, a disease also known as river blindness or filaria in popular parlance, continues to wreak havoc. Onconsokaisis is a parasitic disease due to onkosaka volvus. Uh, this disease is transmitted by simulium. Oconsokaisis is a public health problem in Cameroon. This is a concern that gave rise in 1995 to the establishment by the Cameroonian government of a control strategy with the support of the World Health Organization and other international partners against this disease. The main strategy that the state uses is treatment with ivermectin, that is to say, we treat with mectizan from a donor who is abroad and we distribute it in the communities. This strategy is based on awareness campaigns and mass treatment of populations living in rich areas with mectizan. Focus is along major rivers results are palatable. When I came here in 1994, I saw young women, young boys in these areas with their skin completely destroyed by onchocerciasis. We had many blind people in these communities along this river. Epilepsy, they had in all the families here, there was at least one epileptic patient in all these families. But now the situation has completely changed. The last evaluation we did here, we saw that the skin of people, as you can see, has changed. Their skin is normal. Children in this community, they would just hear about the, this type of skin we used to see in this community, thanks to everything. However, the strategy also exposed weaknesses leading to the persistence of the disease in certain areas. Like any program, we are not always 100%. There are some eligible people who do not take their treatment, others for fear of side effect, because they have had certain members of the family who have had complications or cases of death. Onconsokaisis is a serious disease transmitted to humans by the black fly. The insect lives along the rivers where the population goes to for their daily activities, unfortunately at the risk of their health. The mumu, the mumu disturbs us a lot when we are in the fields by the river. When we are in the house, the flies come in to bite us. We don't know what to do. Here are the consequences. There are redness on my skin. To ensure the bite from Mumut, that is what people living on the backs of the Mbam goes through. It is impossible for these people to escape the bite from these black flies. For more than 20 years, the Center for Research on Filariasis and Other Tropical Diseases has supported the state of Cameroon in its national strategy to fight onconsokaisis. The team, led by Professor Joseph Kamnu, is dedicated to finding ways to eradicate river blindness, including the establishment of new control strategy. The objective of the onkosekaisis community, of those who fight against the disease, is to completely eliminate onkosekaisis. Because in some foresight like this one, the vector density is so high that it will be difficult to eliminate onkosekaisis only with ivermectin. Nearly 20 rivers are said to be responsible for the transmission of onkosekaisis in Cameroon. Amongst the strategies to fight against river blindness is slash and clear seems to promise better results. The female adult of Simulium, they put their eggs on vegetables 
on this water and these uh, 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 eggs they develop to larva and grow to uh, adult simulium. This simulium they come from water and bite along the rivers to transmit this disease. Les simuli ont besoin de repas de sang. Black flies need a blood meal to mature their eggs, so that's why they stink others, including humans. Prendre du sang et assurer la maturation de leurs. Experts from the Center for Research on Filariasis and other tropical diseases highlight the example of African countries where the vector control has been carried out for many years through the spreading of chemicals to kill the monsters. Governments have deployed large-scale programs served by considerable means including helicopters, but with limits as to its effectiveness on the vector and environmental pollution. To carry out field operation, the Center for Research on Filariasis and other tropical diseases has received support from the American University of South Florida. These partners brings its expertise by providing satellite images to locate the breeding grounds of the mouton and thus facilitate their destructions. We are here to localize areas where we can implement our larval control strategy. I specifically I'm going to be looking using GIS to localize where these areas are so that we can now come in and implement. One of our biggest problems in this particular area which is very different than what we were doing in Uganda is the presence of another uh, vector. In this case it is the chrysop and this is causing a disease called loa loa. So we are having a problem with a dual infection, a co-endemicity. So what we, with that problem, we're not able to use our normal medication treatment, which is the ivermectin. So what we are trying to do is to try to find where these habitats are, implement the slash and clear, so that by so doing, we can now eliminate the eggs of the vector of Simulium damnosa. Some water courses are selected as experimental areas and a theme of cleaners after training to go to the various sites identified beforehand by a drone. The device flew over the water course and brought back useful images for analysis replacing satellite images. After traveling by cone, it is in the water that they spend much of the time thoroughly cleaning the supports on which the mammoths lay eggs. The study started with a collection of basic data. For a year, we captured the black flies thanks to collectors that we placed at different points in two villages in order to study how they vary densities during the year. These voluntary cleaners display their enthusiasm and their hard work. So with application and tenacity, they approve the requirements of each session. We are here to destroy the modern eggs and we bring them down with the Mbam River finally to relieve the population. We suffer a lot with parents who become blind. We do not have beautiful skin because of the mustard. We ask you to help us. Do not abandon us. Puth Kale, as its name denotes, is bordering the river Kele. In recent months, the Center for Research on Filariasis and Other Tropical Diseases has been involved in this as part of the Slash and Clear strategy. Residents of the village were recruited and trained in capturing activities. We have selected two collection points and the method used for the black fly collection is human landing parties. Teams of collectors were recruited in the village. Local individuals living permanently in the village were recruited to perform this collection. We have voluntarily given the importance of the project, well, as you can see, with these vacuum cleaners. When a modern egg lands on us, we capture it. The capture mouton eggs are brought back to the laboratory setup 
for the needs of the course. This proximity device facilitates understanding in the context of the field and promotes the rapid progress of analysis with a view to the intervention. Put it under the, the, the microscope, it magnifies it, then you start dissecting from the abdomen. You open the abdomen gently of one, you remove the ovaries, then from there you start examining to know whether it is a parous fly or a nudiparous fly. At the end of the field operations, the collected lava are kept for more in-depth. While we are cleaning the brooding grounds, we take the opportunity to collect some lava as you can see. We will keep it in a product solution in the laboratory. It is a mixture of acetic acid and canoe. This will allow us to identify which species we are dealing with. The Center for the Research on Filariasis and Other Tropical Diseases thus deploys an organization dedicated to the development of the slash and clear strategy. It is a demanding process and the first result makes it possible to predict a strong reduction in the presence of unconsequences in Cameroon. The slash and clear strategy is one of large-scale operations which need the support of all actors and development partners to be successful. One of the things that I would like to really uh, talk about here is the cooperation that we're getting from the local people, which has been incredible. So as the cooperation and the, uh, of the mayors, of the authorities along these big rivers, because as I said before, this simulium is a big concern for all the farmers who work along these big rivers in Cameroon, these flies do not allow them to work properly. So if we destroy this vector, this will allow them to work properly along this river to develop our country. Cameroon is recognized for its varied biodiversity and the beauty of its landscapes. Therefore, the river birds unfortunately do not benefit greatly from these wetlands in terms of tourism. The Bams hippos, for example, a very rare breed, have difficulty attracting visitors. Thousands of hectares of fertile land around Nun or Sanaga cannot also be calmly exploited because of the mumut. The slash and clear strategy conceived, tested and developed by the Center for Research on Filariasis and other tropical diseases with the partnership of the University of South Florida will be the perfect opportunity to put an end to unconscious crisis so that all decision makers and development partners participate.